In this video, I'll be showing you how to turn this into this. This tutorial will show you a beginning to end process for editing as well as a general overview of all the layers used to create the composition. The main topics in this video will be turning day into night, adding elements, adding glow and highlights, and adding finishing touches. And full disclosure before we begin, I am not a Photoshop expert or anything, I just think it's a good idea for me to document my process so I could hopefully help others with their Photoshop skills and just learning other tools and just different processes. And I also think it's just a good way for other people to maybe provide more insight and feedback to me on how I go about things and maybe suggest better ideas and ways I could go about editing stuff. So I look at it as a win-win uh, and hope to just increase engagement in the community in both aspects uh, in terms of me helping others as well as people maybe providing more feedback and resources to myself as well. But I do hope this video is helpful and entertaining for you, and if so, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for future content. Now, let's get in the edit. Alright, so the first thing I do uh, is just use the pen tool to cut out the main object and create another layer out of that. Uh, I do this just because it'll help me later on when I want to apply highlights and make color adjustments to just... Uh, the main object so I'm not interfering with the background layer or anything and have to be as accurate. So I do this to simplify the process later down the road. Next thing I do is add a color lookup adjustment layer to the background and I select day to night mode. Uh, this essentially just makes the image from daytime to nighttime adding darker tones and more of a blue tone to fit that nighttime setting. Uh, once I do that, I duplicate it just to make it a darker feel of kind of what I'm aiming for. And then I do the same thing for the main object, but instead of having two layers clipped to that, I only clip one uh, color lookup adjustment layer to that for the day to night mode uh, because I want the main object to be a little brighter, be more focused, and it's in the foreground, so have it have more attention. Here I use uh, the pen tool on a new layer to create a selection around the eye areas of the mask to work on the glow aspect. So um, once I create the selection, I use the brush tool and use a blue color that kind of matches the mask, a type of glow that I would prefer. And then the first layer is an overlay layer. Uh, the second layer that I clip to that would be a screen layer. And then uh, the third layer, I don't clip it to it just so I could have it more outside the, the boundaries. And then I make that a linear light layer and make, give it a Gaussian blur so it can spread out a bit and have more of a glow effect to it. So now I want to create a, a laser light for the camera thing or whatever's on the helmet. Uh, kind of make it look more like the from the movie Predator. Uh, so I make the inner stroke uh, a lighter red tone uh, because the center of the lasers are usually a lighter color. Uh, and then I add a second layer with a normal red brush stroke with a little bit of Gaussian blur. And then I add a third layer doing the same thing, uh, increasing the Gaussian blur again to make it more glowy. Uh, and then with the third layer, I add a white color overlay. Uh, with a, a blend mode of overlay and then a 80% opacity and I do that just to make it uh, pop a little bit more Here I am just doing the same process as I did for the blue glow but now adding orange glow So I'm going through the mask where all the orange areas are uh, and then just either using the brush tool or the pen tool to mark those areas uh, and then I make the first layer in overlay mode. I'll duplicate that, make the second layer a screen mode and add a little bit of Gaussian blur to it to start the glow effect. And then I'll duplicate that layer and keep it screen mode and then add more Gaussian blur to that to just increase the glow a little bit more. Next, I add an image of a moon to apply it to the background. I set it to screen mode to get rid of the black. Uh, and then I mess with the blend if underlying mode for the image to uh, adjust slowly to get rid of areas where the trees uh, are located in the background. So only the white areas would display like it's actually in the background. Uh, and then I set it to a Gaussian blur to make it more blurry to fit the, the background layer. Uh, and then I duplicate that 
add another Gaussian layer to that and increase it a little bit to add more glow to the sky. Again, I'm just creating more layers, so just adding more glow to areas on the helmet. So I'm following the same processes as I did before, just selecting areas and using the brush tools, uh, doing overlays and screen modes and Gaussian blur just to make those glow effects on certain areas of the mask. So you could watch that and try and follow along. Since we added the moon and glow earlier, uh, I thought it'd be fitting to add a white solid color in now to the background so we could try and brighten up the tree lines a little bit as if they were reactant to the actual glow from the moon. Uh, so I followed the same process, adding a white solid color and then uh, editing the layer style, the underlying layer, and just slowly making adjustments to it to softly increase the brightness of the tree line areas, um, but not too much. I wanted the bounty hunter to seem a little more robotic, so I found a few images of robots and selected the parts I wanted to use. Uh, and then I masked that and then inverted the mask so I could softly paint in the areas I wanted. So my brush was set to a low flow so I could softly paint them in. Uh, and then so I paint one in the arm and then one in the chest uh, just to give it more of a robotic feel. So it's kind of like half, half human, half cyborg type thing. Uh, and just make it give it more of a futuristic feel kind of I wanted to add a little bit more color to the areas that had blue and yellow from the interior parts of the skin So I got the brush tool with an overlay mode and just tried playing around with it a bit So I got something I, I wanted and painted softly on areas just to enhance the the light areas where the the wires or interior circuits may be displaying a brighter tone then I used the brush tool to paint a soft white in the background to add more of a foggy feel to it as well as just add distance and make the main object pop out with contrast a little bit more. Now I want to start adding highlights to the main object so I add an exposure layer and increase the exposure and then invert the layer and then just start painting in the edges to wherever the moonlight would be hitting it. Uh, at first I had my doubts just because as you see there's a lot of black line edges around the object because I cut them out earlier in the beginning um, but throughout trial and error in the process I got more confident and by the end of it it turned out to look pretty good. So I go around the whole object looking for areas where light may be hitting it from the moonlight and then just slowly painting those areas on to make it look as natural as possible. I wanted to add a cool breathing exhaust effect to the mask so I found this image and I used the blend if tool to get rid of most of the parts I didn't need and then I used the eraser to just erase the rest. Uh, once I got the smoke how I wanted it I set it up next to like the breathing ports and uh, transformed it a little bit and then erased the remaining parts I didn't need and then I gave it a hue and saturation effect, clipped it to the image layer and gave it a blue color to fit the glow uh, as if it was coming out of the exhaust and then uh, I made the end of it a little more transparent as it would become transparent as it's uh, getting further away from the exhaust pore area and then the inside I made it a lighter blue using screen uh, to make it more fresh where it's closer to the light after that, I just duplicated the whole process for the other exhaust port.
Now for one of the most important parts, highlights. So I created many hue and saturation layers, one for the blue, one for the orangish yellow color, and one for the red. Uh, and then I inverted them and then just went through the areas painting on wherever light would be hitting those areas to make it look as natural and realistic as possible. Uh, so I do that for the blues, the yellows, and the, the red laser. And then I create another exposure layer uh, with a high exposure for the moon reflection color that I start to paint over the gun. I also needed to add some shadows in to make it a little darker in areas where it should be. So I created a levels adjustment layer and made it a little darker. And once I got to a setting I liked, then I inverted it and just started painting on areas to apply more shadows to the right areas. Uh, and then just continued my process of adding more highlights. I create another hue and saturation layer so I could paint a nice green screen color onto the watch. Uh, and then from there I painted on a few dots as if she was tracking someone down and then I gave it a Gaussian blur since it's not the main focus and a little distant away. And then I added highlights to the respected areas that the watch light might be hitting. I also wanted to make it look like this isn't her first rodeo, so I found this texture uh, to make her helmet and material more grungy-like. I put it in a color dodge mode and then inverted it and then just started painting it on areas on her helmet as well as her gun just to give it a more rustic look. Lastly, I wanted to add some particles over their laser, so I used this image, set it to screen mode, adjusted the blend if a little bit, and then I erased the rest that's not close enough to be displaying in the laser. Once I did that, I created a hue and saturation layer to make the particles look more red as if, you know, the laser light was hitting it. And that wraps up the whole process. So from the very beginning, we started with this image and throughout the whole editing process, we ended with this. Hopefully this video was either entertaining or helpful to you in some way. If so, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for future videos to come. I definitely plan on doing more tutorial videos in the future, so make sure to comment below ideas and topics you'd like me to cover. Lastly, as I mentioned in my last video, I do make a resource sheet for every video and edit I make. So make sure to click on the link in the description below and you'll get access to all the images and everything I used for this edit. So then you could use this video to follow along and practice your skill set. Besides that, I hope you guys have a great day and I'll catch you in the next video.